Okay. So the name of Ben was about five years of like, resignation of being a very simple alphabetical thing. A friend is not called Zach, even though my class is really bad at the name. So we're saying, look, you're greeted and done with the person, uh, what do you do? But I always made an effort, make an effort to introduce myself. So like, hi, I'm Ben, nice to meet you. What's your name? Hi, uh, it's still Ben. Uh, <laughs> 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 like the thing is, this happens to me a lot because I wear glasses and I don't always wear glasses. And so sometimes when I'm greeted, I'm a lot of the time, unless they're six inches away from me, I don't know who the person is. First, I want to introduce you to what they do in Washington, D.C., just like the home state is from you. It's there over the summer, and they already said things to do. So I'll teach you something useful, and then tell you a story that actually happened uh, to me uh, yesterday. So, in Washington, D.C., this happens a lot because, uh, you know, you're meeting movers and shakers, and you might kind of recognize the person, everyone looks the same, because it's all like black suit, naked suit, red tie, blue tie, it's very only uh, diversity there. Right? So what they do in Washington, D.C., is they said, they don't say nice to meet you, they say, they say nice to see you, which is very slick. Because you can see someone for the first time, you can see someone a lot of times. He's like, look, oh, nice to see you, right? So that's something you can do. That's not what I do. Okay. I wish I was that way. So, I wear glasses, but I don't wear glasses when I sleep, but I don't know if you guys do this. I'm weird. It's nice to wake up, but I might be able to see probably most of the time. Um, I'm in a room with uh, John, who's there, I was grabbing inside with John and the guy with Adam. And um, Adam had to change him because he was his girlfriend about six, so he's prepared. I didn't know that. Uh, I went to sleep, and I woke up. And there was a person sitting on the end of my bed, which I assumed was Adam, because Adam was there when I went to sleep. Mm -hmm. I woke up, didn't have my glasses on, I was like, oh, right, wait, guy waved, smiled, I was on the phone, I was like, oh, this is Adam, this is fine. Went to the toilet, had a little shower, came out, uh, like in my towel, put on my glasses, it wasn't Adam. And I was like, hello, uh, I was like, oh, okay, like acting like nothing was wrong, like, this is totally fine, this is okay. So I called Mark out from Macedonia, it was now in my room, okay? So, <laughs>
stories, better writing, better characters, and a better developed universe. Star Wars is obviously better. So, uh, why, why is it? Well, it's. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 it's in the audience. You do need this writing. Because like, the thing is, like, Star Wars is better because it provides this smoke screen for nerds. Because like, anytime, like, in almost any context, you tell someone, they're like, oh, well, like, uh, they ask you, like, what do you like doing? It's like, I want, like, Star Trek. Like, watch them look as if like a dick and just groan out of your head. <laughs> because being attractive, like, is a thing that essentially makes yourself into a thrive. Because that's essentially what nerds have been for all time. But Star Wars has given us something to benefit everyone, to benefit nerd culture at the university. Because it is something nerdy, something sci-fi, that everyone can like, and that pretty much everyone does like. It's given us something that has allowed nerds, like, like myself, to actually be able to access a popular culture and make them think that we're slightly less weird than we actually are. So I would say that Star Wars like, is the most important like, part of sort of the sci-fi nerd culture that has developed in the last seven years. It's like it's a critical thing that has given us the ability like, to share who we are and be unabashedly happy about who we are and not fear the repercussions of, of seeming simply weird. Star Trek, on the other hand, has been like perpetually like an insular sort of thing with like thousands of different characters and storylines that make no sense to the person going to see them. If you went to see the 14th Star Trek movie, you would have no clue what is going on. You go see Star Wars Episode 3, even though it's a terrible movie, you have a pretty good idea about who everyone is. And I think that makes it necessarily like a better thing, a more uh, a more open thing. And I didn't start my time with this mask, I'm gonna turn my head up. Two minutes to get that was. Oh, thank you. Right. Oh, oh, I was efficient. So, Star Wars. Star Wars is like a remarkable like 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 mentioned creation. It is the work of someone who has very good, very few ideas of his own, but was able to bring together like, a significant amount of like, philosophical wisdom, like things like Taoism, things like, like a various aspects of Eastern culture that had never really been expressed in any sort of uh, modern popular cultural context, and actually disseminated them in a way that people could understand. I mean, like, look at the idea of the Force. Like, it's a, it's a bizarre, like, philosophical, like, the, like, theosophical concept that, yes, people are willing to actually understand and engage with. The fact that there are a significant number of people, 1% of people on the Irish census last year, that label themselves as Jedi, demonstrates that these, that these concepts permeate like, our society as a whole in a way that no other, that no other like, piece of popular culture or science fiction has ever been able to. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to say that Star Wars, albeit a kitschy sort of product, has managed to actually shape the popular context in ways that no, no, nothing else has. So, I'm happy to say Style outdated. Uh, so, how does Gaming Style differ from British parliamentary style? 
all rounds will be recorded, uh, and the winner will be determined based on who gets the most YouTube views. <laughs> you eliminate the as created POI stance, where a debater holds their wig with one hand and shows they're not holding the weapon with the other. Of course, in my style, we are going to be switching and signaling the POI. Yeah, new style! <laughs> now, from here on in, Madam Speaker will be addressed as sexy lady. <laughs> Uh, according to Psy, the South Korean singer of this hit single, um, the point of game style is to dress classic. Consequently, style points will be awarded on the basis of fashion style as opposed to speaking style. <laughs> uh, now on to role fulfillment. Uh, so opening government, or opai mania. <laughs> For those who need his translation. Opening opposition, instead of offering clash, would be expected to carry out some serious grinding with the government team. <laughs> and I'm talking substantial engagement, not supervision. <laughs> the extension speaker's goal would to be to offer a remix of the front half. <laughs> so why move to gaming style debate? There is no better way to profile and popularity of the World University Debate Championships, then by switching styles. You know, Yang Yang Style has already been added to the Collins Dictionary as one of the phrases of the year. Uh, ben Ki Moon has said the Yang Yang Style is a force for world peace. <laughs> 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 Prime Minister David Cameron conceded the superiority of the Yang Yang Style when he himself attempted the song's signature dance moves. Now, as debaters, we strive for perfect communication. Uh, when you use a South Korean Samsung, you'll experience a cellular sensation. UK Virgin Mobile can compare it for Dr. Hall. As debaters, we also like to take the moral high ground. Uh, the British have let us down on this front. Uh, Princess Kate's front was exposed in France and Prince Harry <laughs> took all in Vegas. The naked truth is that it's time to abandon the British style. Now, my proposal to change the format of the World University Debate Championships may have been rejected. Uh, I may have been a dissenting voice today, but if you help me embrace this dissent, then maybe in World 2014, we will be debating gang style, all the while recognizing that the song doesn't say much, but it sounds great, and that encapsulates the debaters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my name is Alec, I'm from the University of Otago, and my topic is essentially when you have a really hot co worker, do you go there or do you not go there? Um, and, like, I'm a law student and a lawyer, and I think I'm probably going to run a little bit through the specs I'm going to get. But the first immediate thought I have there where is, well, everything kind of depends on the scenario. Because, I mean, first of all, it's going to depend on the job I do. Like, if you're in the porn industry, <laughs> you don't have much choice whether or not to go there. And hopefully, it means that there's going to be plenty of outcome of what you do as a consequence of that. It's a bit different when you're, like, a lawyer or a law student. Because usually, if you go there and you have, like, a really attractive co worker, you're probably going to be fucking crazy because the job of a lawyer essentially involves being pedantic to make a living. Like, we are essentially like glorified grammar Nazis. So everybody thinks that, like, here's every word, thinks about everything, you know, according to like the layers of meaning that can possibly take off. So if you go there with a co worker, they'll probably, one, fall in love with you, and then secondly, you get into this terrible relationship where you, um, where you have to try and like um, explain away every single meaning of every possible word to that person. The reason why I know this so deeply is because uh, I, this actually happened to me uh, last year when I was an intern at the law firm and uh, me and a fellow intern 
Have a little bit of a thing, and uh, I didn't turn out so well. Basically, we got into a disagreement, and she ended up telling me that I had the emotional intelligence of a 10 year old. Um, I hope it's not actually true. How long did I have that? <laughs> <laughs> I have two minutes left. I've got people one minute, and I've finished everything off of my tags. Okay, what's the disaster? That's the next set of stories that I tell. I'm actually going to stop now because I'm not going to bore you with any more stories. Uh, uh, basically, my, my final lesson, I guess, for the speech is that like, think about the job that you're in. Think about the person that you're with, and you know, maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. But uh, my biggest recommendation, I think, is that if you are in the porn industry, definitely go there. Go there again and again, whether you have a choice or not. That's, that's 
have a story about vampires. Well, no, the sunlight's fine. They just, they just blow a little bit. Well, let's have a story about you know kids who you can hang out with you know very very pale paisley paisley people. And I think that as well. This is where I think Harry Potter really fits in. It's the idea of going to another world, going to another school, being part of something else, learning about magic, something that just truly appeals to children and truly appeals to people as a whole. So I think, you know, while most books have merits for children, of course, Harry Potter is a very original. Thanks.
So my name is Brendan, I'm from Canada, uh, and my talk today is should you live in, should you live in yesterday or tomorrow? And unfortunately, I don't know what that means, and I spend most of my prep time trying to find a washroom. So I can't tell you exactly what that means, but I can tell you that right now it's today, and that we are in Germany, and like most of you, before coming here, I was operating with like the arrogance of a modern tourist, and didn't learn any German. So I thought I'd give it a go and try to give a public speech, which is half in German, using this German phrase. <laughs> in the section, Hotel Hassels. Kommen Sie mit mir. Es gibt ein Problem mit mir. There's a problem in my room. Wetzchen. Moise. Kakir Lacken. Freuden Mäxchen. Bed bugs. <laughs> Mice. Cockroaches. Prostitutes. <laughs> Under eating. Is as besser als McDonald's? Is it better than McDonald's? <laughs> Nick with Augen. Nothing with eyeballs. <laughs> In Esse, New York, Insect, I eat only insects. <laughs> <laughs> Under sightseeing, and now this is not only my favorite phrase in the book, possibly my favorite phrase ever. Ich habe mir Mutter an Sterbettbett versprochen, das zu sehen. I promised my mother on her deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> Ich bin lesbisch. Ich habe Ina. Arsch stecken. Sie sind sehr lesbisch. Er belastet mich. Fassen Sie mich nicht. I'm married. I'm a lesbian. I have a contagious disease. <laughs> You are bothering me. He is bothering me. Don't touch me. Sie sind erklärt. Hör auf mir. Nach zu laufen. You're disgusting. Stop following me. Uh, under... Okay, so this took longer than I thought because I'm going to two speeches. Uh, so I'm going to try and jump ahead to a German romance. I am... Ich bin... You, horny. <laughs> ich habe eine Krakete. Ich habe viele Krakete. I have no diseases. I have many diseases. <laughs> <laughs> Is he an aphrodisiac? Is this an aphrodisiac? Alright, that's it. <laughs>
Sorry guys, uh, due to my crippling social anxiety problems, um, I need to find creative ways to keep people. So what I decided to do is I'm going to pretend that uh, we're having small talk and I'm going to uh, pretend that you're asking questions about my trip and such and I'm going to answer. Uh, yeah, my flight was okay. Uh, I had no problems with flight attendants and I enjoyed the meal. Um, oh, you have problems with your flight? Uh, that's really interesting. Uh, um, <laughs> my, my first night in Berlin was great. I, I stayed in a Holiday Inn Express uh, right next door to a sex mace. Um, uh, that, that's a really personal question. <laughs> Yeah, it was enjoyable. Um, <laughs> but uh, the hotel room I'm staying at is quite nice. Uh, there's actually a window right from the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> One day at a time. 
even in this turgid crime, we do our best to embrace dissent. And even when the mountains fall, the sky rises, the winds blow, we know in our hearts that we must go and be prudent and pay our rent <laughs> and uh, require consent <laughs> and pay every cent unless you've spent it all and embrace dissent. <laughs> I hope my speech was not awful and was at least a little bit decent. <laughs> and with that pun, I think, mean, wait, how much time do I have left? Twelve parsecs? <laughs> Star Wars joke, sorry. <laughs> Alright, uh, I'm not going to spare you any more game. Wait. The other round. Thank you very much. <laughs> Fly to others, 
that we just made up. <laughs> but fourth place does make cowards of us all. And thus my wish to make this round less awful is sickly door with the best hope of third. And disposition of great style and import. With this regard, <coughs> their morals turn awry and lose the name of action. Talk to you now. The next guest speaker. Jerk sure, in my constructive is all my turf now burned. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. If you can make a joke, just Yeah. Yeah. My name is William Goodson, and I am from Canada. It took me a long time to get here, but I'm very glad to be in the middle. Now, the question that I was asked to answer was whether to download illegally or pay for music. I am going to do something contrary to possibly every person in this room and pay for music. I'm going to adopt a, a, what I think is a, a German sensibility and not only pay for the music, but possibly, if I'm lucky, on the side they will give me some forms to sign. And I will also have toast. I will put sprinkles on the toast. And I will be very pleased with myself for maintaining the orderliness of the process. And I will be happy. So, the German people are people that I really, really like, uh, despite not living in Germany. I had a little bit of exposure to them across the board when I lived in the Netherlands. Now, you might be surprised to find, I was surprised too, that the Dutch and the Germans, they're different people. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this, this is not so obvious from across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, I'm sorry Germans and I'm sorry Dutch people. Uh, but upon arriving, it became very, very clear. Uh, it became incredibly clear, in fact, when I was living in Maastricht, and I noticed that despite having languages that were, I thought, very similar, the Dutch and the Germans would use English to speak to each other, and would refuse to use German or Dutch, even when they knew those languages. Not only that, but the Dutch have another number of interesting names for German. The one that intrigued me the most was German holes, or, and don't worry, it's nothing to see. It is the phenomenon that occurs on Dutch beaches, whereupon, ostensibly, German families dig large holes in the beach uh, through, with no other purpose, other, it seems, than to sit in the holes and be pleased with the, the construction <laughs> and all the engineering of those walls. Uh, the, the Dutch have different interpretations of what the holes are for, uh, none of which are very flattering. But <laughs> nonetheless, it was interesting. Uh, the Dutch also have a type of German that they like to refer to as the car German. Now, the car German wants something in the Netherlands. They either want education, they want employment, they want access to all of the wonderful things that the Netherlands has that Germany has a, a, a dimmer view on from a legal perspective. Um, the, car, the car Germans like that thing, but they do not like the Netherlands. So they make sure that they grasp at things from a hand's distance. They drive in with their vehicles, and they, they do their best not to leave those vehicles. They sleep in Germany, but, uh, but access those things in the Netherlands. Uh, Dutch people obviously take this as a, as a massive insult. From the Netherlands, Germany is obviously just like the, the, the little brother who, who wants to be like the Netherlands, but just happens to be much bigger, uh, much wealthier, uh, has a better job. Um, more territory, uh, but, but they want to be like the Netherlands, obviously. This is the prevailing view. Uh, but additionally, I think that there is this sort of this sort of uh, an adoration for the way in which Germany has managed to dig itself out of some really terrible situations and really give excellent examples for the rest of the world in things like energy, in things like engineering. I I haven't really seen a lot of examples of great beauty in a lot of the architecture of Berlin. I, 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 I haven't seen a lot of examples of fantastic uh, organization in some of the things that I've done in Berlin. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I am incredibly glad to be here and experience all of the things that Berlin has to offer. I am incredibly glad to be able to have nine rounds of what will hopefully be debates, uh, <laughs> if not if not anything more or anything less. Uh, and I'm very looking forward to meeting all of you and getting to know all of you. Uh, I will probably not be downloading any music, but if I do, I will damn well sure be paying for it. Thank you. <laughs>
Um, okay, so that is the web, right? The web. Where would I do it? Tell me yes. Weird. Right? It's like the coolest and weird brand you can get there. Dinosaur. And you can't even buy dinosaur. Alright, so how, how would I design my arm? Because that is, uh, arms for both are not meant for that. So I would just design them in the shape of a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> so they would fit exactly and have more shape to food and everything. Alright. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you've been bored, but I'm just, I just want to say that dinosaurs are cool and especially the cute ones. They are almost as cute as German girls. And oh yes, thank you. I would have done that so much. <laughs>
because kind of like frustrated, being that kind of person who comes from the philosophical type of speaking, uh, the intellectual type of public speaking. But well, uh, when I arrived here, I discovered that uh, the whole scenario was a whole comic feel, and like trying to adjust to that comic feel atmosphere at life. Say, okay, let me just come up with something that is really going to be nice with uh, this type of topic that I got. And the topic reads, when passing a person in a plane with your bath or your genitals. <laughs> <laughs> but however, like, however, like, the topic uh, just began to be a whole lot of empirical considering that, you know, we always bought a plane, bought a plane, you come across a whole lot of mixed races, ethnic groupings, that appreciate things in a very different way, you know, like, you know, get into a plane, you find those Arabic uh, brothers who all look in all stunts, those Muslim brothers who look in all serious and you're asking yourself, oh, God, if I'm to pass you, uh, maybe this Arabic sister with uh, using my butt, I have to constrict it and try and prevent it, prevent myself from fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you know, you in a plane then there's that like sex looking chick and you know, <laughs> like fast and you know the first thing that actually like you know gets to strike in your mind is like you might think whether you have some residues or some remains of some pieces and think of the cards. One of those things was still talking about asking you say with your mask or your genitals. And in certain instances, there's this issue of stereotype. Yeah, the issue of stereotype. A situation where African men have been perceived as uh, people with a big genital property. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? Like, you're in the plane and you're passing by with your genitals. Uh, with the genital set in front of the lady, right? With the genital set in front of the lady. And actually feeling like, you know, when you like passing through their faces, and you just see how this slight show can, which actually shows that of the slight fantasies, you know, from that actual particular person to have uh, this genital property. <laughs> Sometimes being that person, being a poet, a fantasy type of writing poet, I usually fantasize on how they do, like, do you feel like, you know, the big mental properties. And, you know, <laughs> imagine how they will be like introducing uh, their your, your, your genital structure within their mental system. So, but when all has been said and done, when all has been said and done, you know, I truly believe that um, people have actually built so much insecurities about themselves that you know at times you get to feel insecure about yourself simply because you're amongst a certain grouping and you get to think of what the would get to think about you. So that on its own shows our bankruptcy in as much as uh, you know embracing dissent is concerned. So what I really advise you is that you know you should always be confident in yourself and never have those imaginations that take out the sense of uh, embracement, dissent, and security. Just not. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, peer pressure got better of me, so I'm going to try and be funny. 
I apologize to a lot of you because this is actually going to be quite hard for me because I've got a German grandfather. <laughs> See, he, he's actually born a few blocks away. It's, it's a lovely story. But of all of those characteristics that I could have inherited from him, I mean, the fantastic taste in food, the efficiency, the wonderful taste in music, I inherited the sense of humor. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm actually impressed that a public speaking competition in Berlin turned into an amateur stand up act. I mean, obviously, it's been done before, like people trying to public speak deciding to be funny. I mean, why else would JFK decide to call himself a donut in front of loads of people? But, so, yeah, as you can tell by the sinking laughter, I'm not very funny. Um, we have a style seminar in Durham where people would feedback, you feedback on your style, and my feedback was that uh, apparently I breathe in a unnerving way when I speak. In the <laughs> it's kind of like Stevie from Malcolm in the Middle. Um, so, uh, someone told me once that it's kind of like being broken up with when I'm speaking, which actually brings me on quite nicely to the topic of the debate, which is should we explain to people why we rejected their friend request on Facebook? <laughs> so, being rejected on Facebook is a lot like being broken up with, so I can relate to that because apparently my speaking style resembles that. Uh, it's kind of sad that in a virtual community where your entire value is based on the number of friends you have, that you've been rejected, but being told why you've been rejected, it's just ungraceful. It's like not only have they decided to kick you in the crotch a little bit, they've also then decided to video your reaction to being kicked in the crotch, and then put it on YouTube. <laughs> kind of like making you do an embarrassing public speech and then videoing it and sending it out to the whole virtual community in the public way. <laughs> so, so I think it's just inadequate, right? It, it adds insult to injury and it hurts a lot. But in my case, I would really hate to have to explain to people why I rejected them on Facebook, right? So I don't want to have to explain, I'm really sorry, I've got what you want in a club, that doesn't mean we have to be friends, that doesn't mean I ever want to talk to you again. I was in a bad place and to be honest I was a little bit drunk. I don't have to tell someone that, I don't have to tell people that that's the case, but I mean it's also like, the embarrassment when someone adds you on Facebook and you go, no, no, I don't remember you, I'm sorry. The, the face seems familiar, but I was probably drunk when I met you. Or worse, I do remember you and you insulted me and I dislike you. I don't want to explain that to people. I think it, it does add insult to injury. It makes people feel unnecessarily upset that not only have they not got that little bit of extra self-worth of that one more person who wants to be friends with them, but then they're also being told why. It's, it's like being told, no, it actually is you. That's why I'm bringing up, no, it's not me, it's you. It's a tiny spot, right? And, and trust me, that hurts. I, I, I've had that, that talk before, no, really, it's you. Um, so, thank you everyone for listening. I've only lasted for three minutes, but that's usual for me. So. <laughs>
Because you can just be person by a speaking position, right? Just say, leave the opposition. Opposition extension, opposition width. It's great. You can learn nothing substantial about people and you can get away with it. But of course, this is also something you can find in your life, right? So I often find myself trying to date. Um, yeah, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a fan of lost causes, right? And possible deaths. And I find myself sitting the opposite of the girl. And for the life of me, I can't remember what her name is. So, of course, you just have to say, well, leaving the opposition is usually inappropriate. So, <laughs> opposition data, that, that usually works. Um, <laughs> and I'm actually having to try quite hard not to start rebutting everything that everybody said previously. Um, again, that's something that I have trouble real life as well. So again, we'll, we'll go back to the, the, the dating scenario, right? Sometimes it just slips. So, you know, you'll be dating and you'll be in a nice restaurant, music tinkling away in the background somewhere, and you're sitting in a visit with your partner, I don't know. Maybe you successfully put that doctor's photo up onto OKQ and then you to me. And I'll be like this. And you'll be like this. And she'll typically say, <laughs> So my name is Trisha. What do you do? And of course, the natural response to the debate is to say, well, okay, so we know that her name is Trisha, right? But there are a few problems that we have with her case, right? She's asked me what I do. I mean, that's not actually given me any specificity there. Oh, you're leaving. Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> right. that, that's, that's, kind of, that's not the only area where debating can kind of help give the life of guidance, right? So, I've actually found that well, I've gone through a lot of flags, lived in a lot of places, I'm on like my seventh degree now or something, I've really lost count. But I'm currently living with the other places, and it's by far the nicest flag sharing experience I ever had. Um, the People's Republic of Debatistan is currently flourishing. Uh, we have a really useful washing up and cooking rotor. Thanks to the intervention of some UN peacekeepers who dropped by, our constitution is now in the draft. Um, so we should be able to start paying rent paying regularly quite soon. Um, although it must have been in a better tactical position against my housemates. I have had to now just fall insurgency into their food cupboard. I now control all of the tea supplies to the house. And this is the other interesting thing. So I live with like 12 female traders. They have like seven different types of tea. I've stolen them all, and they're all exactly the same type of tea. It's completely ridiculous. So, what can you take from this debating gives you some very important guidance for the rest of your life, especially if you have this concrete interest in the Thank you very much. I can't understand you. Uh, I thought I 
only the, the boss and telling me, oh, is it um, I'm, I'm, I'm lost? Oh God, it's like it's like I'm it's like I'm I'm I'm, I'm in hell. I don't understand. Uh, uh, immediately somebody came and immediately I told me, oh, gentleman, uh, you just have to uh, embrace this person. What's this is all about, sister? It's all about telling you how to diagnose why it's not good. It was horrible. Why do you think by having a flat nose by a I was wondering what I thought was happening. Then I came in and uh, I get this word. Um, it was just like pills or pills. Like <laughs> uh, I, I was wondering. But I thought uh, maybe I should call home and tell them that I'm going back. I'm going back because I, I don't really see how I can in every city. I called and then somebody came to my aid. So it was quite fantastic. The person came and asked him to call again. I kept on calling. The lines were jammed, but God, what's this? Why should I call? Maybe you should call. We both have the numbers. Maybe you should call. Not me calling, but I thought again that maybe I should call because I'm calling. Thank <laughs> you. 
being perhaps the most beautiful woman who has ever lived, since all beauty stems from her in terms of out of females. So in that regard, I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> flattered. <laughs> so you are pretty. But this is more of a philosophical question. Everyone says that hindsight is 20 And considering all that has happened since that very beginning, would I really choose to, you know, who had that, to believe in God's word or to obey what he has said? And really and truly, when I consider everything that has happened within society and within the development of the human race, would I really put that up? And strangely enough, no. Well, I find it unfathomable, and I find it unconscious that uh, well, we lost the intent to speak of a lot of words, so unconscious. Have we really put the blame of the entire world on a single person? On a single person? Have we really decided that in all the innate wrongs in human beings, that we put the blame on one single woman? that for generations has been permeated, permeated throughout society. Have we really, ladies and gentlemen, decided that he, as a single individual, is to be robbed or credited with all the of society? And truly, and really and truly, if I am to be, I would adamantly protest. I would eat every single goddamn apple on that tree. <laughs> I would chop down that tree, I would build a house, living it, eating apples. <laughs> it's not, but I definitely do not agree with this on principle. I don't nuance this debate. <laughs> to me, uh, uh, basically, that women are at fault, or any one single individual is at fault. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that this is not just what should be challenged. That women should not be put in this, 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 this state of wrong. That feminism is right to the extent that women are equal. That Adam had a choice. Oh, well, I don't know if you really had a choice in this instance. <laughs> but the question here, ladies and gentlemen, I think that the Christianity and the whole construct that it currently per, uh, perpetuates is wrong. And that is why, even though Jamaica is a Christian nation, I don't subscribe to the Christian views. I don't believe in a God that preaches love, but yet we engage in war for his name. So ladies and gentlemen, would I eat the apple? Yes. Would I plant that apple and eat another apple off of another tree? Even though the world may end soon. <laughs> or should have ended. The fact is, ladies and gentlemen, I really do not agree with this notion of looking blame on any single or any sex. I think that we all have choices, yes. We all do wrong, yes. But pointing fingers, blaming individuals is not the way to resolve those problems. And the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, that women are being the ones who are put in that opinion to be the ones who are wrong.
University of Technology, Jamaica. Yes, I said Jamaica. No, I do not have weed. No, I cannot run at all. And no, Bob Marley is not my great grandfather. <laughs> so, I am being told that I have to public speak for three minutes. And really, really, I feel like I'm being held ostrich. As my friend would say, you know, like, I really feel so dramatized being up here trying to figure out exactly what to for the next couple of minutes. Yeah. So they said the theme is that we should embrace the same thing. And clearly, this is my only place to just trying to be convenient, which I'm not. But you know, I really think that instead of being here trying to speak and, and, and be all comical, we should instead have pussy rights. Yeah! <laughs> So, my question is if I'd rather die or live forever? And of course, once again, we're embracing dissent. So, I'm going to be a dissident and say that I really, really, really rather to pee. I've been thinking about it. <laughs> and so, I have written a point about dissent, which I want to pee. <laughs> I want to pee so very bad. I yearn to pee so much, it makes me sad. If only I could release this pent of gush, I'd sit on that throne and say, Oh my freaking gosh. There's so much pressure on my bladder. I'm here reading this stupid point, but to pee, I'd really rather. Yeah. I would love to speak to the restroom in a flash like Jamaica's you're saying. Oh, how. I would love to let it show up like our passing first of three. <laughs> These are the longest three minutes I have ever truly seen. You really wouldn't want to understand. You really wouldn't understand, Rav. I want to pee so bad. I can scream. It is slowly coming down like a fresh oh, burst. <laughs> <laughs> like a fresh burst of winter snow. So like Bashar al-Assad of Syria. I really, 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 really need to go. Someone's nice to you, you don't even know to respond. 
They don't even know how to react to that. And I think in a relationship where sex occurs, we should, you should show your partner that you know how to live a relationship. You know how to be in that relationship. And yet, you don't always have to say thank you, but might be kind of rude after you had two hours of great sex and you say thank you. That might not be the real deal, but if you, you should show your appreciation about the fact that that person is pleasing you, is giving up his time, his energy to give you something amazing. <laughs> I'm guessing in these days, we are really not realizing what sex is about. It's something we just throw away to occur here around the street. There are lots of them. No, it's something we should appreciate. A person is doing something for me. He's giving up his or her time for me to have a great time. And I think we should be able to say thank you for that. Why? Because someone is doing something for us. And we will all want some uh, appreciation for what we do. If I have someone, I want to hear a thank you. It makes me feel good. We all get better, we all get happier. If you say thank you after sex, you not only have a great amount of sex, which really stimulates your endorphin and gets you really happy, no, you really give that person a feeling of happiness and you make the world a better place. Because that's what we're all about. We want to embrace the sex, we want to make the world a better place. And I think it can start by this small thing after sex by saying thank you for having sex with you. For investing this time in our relationship and to make this world a better place. So I want you all to really consider it. Uh, next time you have sex, was it nice? Was it good? Then say thank you. <laughs> So, first of all, you drive like a crazy people, 
And second of all, if you're driving and you see a person running behind you or in front of you, you are going to get crazy and you want to get out of him. So I cannot run on the street because, well, first, it's quite dangerous. Second, the temperature is like 35 degrees, so I will be falling and sweating a lot. And second of all, something that I found very disgusting is that there are poop on the street. So you are running and suddenly you are like, oh my gosh, is this poop? Yes, it is poop because no one, no one get it or no one cares because no one jogging on the street. <laughs> so yes, I rather prefer exercise myself in a studio. And uh, there is something very uh, hilarious about this motion because in the instant that I arrived, a, fr a, a friend of mine said, right, we can jog in the big forest that you saw. And I think, what? In, man in minus one degree, you think that I would jog in the forest? I don't think so. So I rather prefer to exercise myself in a studio and not in the street, for example in Caracas, where I could be uh, hit by a car or step through, or I could be bowling, or if I want to jog here on the forest, I could be frozen because for me this temperature is extremely cold. For you, it's normal, and some of you said, this is the warmest uh, Christmas that I ever had. And I said, really? <laughs> this is the warmest Christmas that you ever had? And my Venezuelan friends, we all are like with scarves, and we have two pants, and we have like three shirts, and a lot of coat. So I, I with you to uh, think that it is much better and secure to exercise yourself in the studio rather in, uh, in the street. Thank you very much. Seven speakers, so we're just going to stop the first session for like five minutes. I think our judges want some food. Um, and we're just going to look at the next list as well to see who's left on it and try to get But yeah, like five minutes to five minutes.